just before recording this video, I decided to shave off this stubble of hair off my face. When I looked in the bathroom mirror, I saw my reflection or my image in the mirror. That image of Brent Winfield can mimic me when I move my hand with the razor and shaving my stubble. The thing to note is I'm able to make the motions of shaving and the image in the mirror is only mimicking me. That image cannot do anything of its own accord. That image of me in the mirror looks as though he's alive, but he's not. I am the only one that is actually alive. We read in Genesis to the story of God creating man from the dust of the ground. Adam was totally lifeless, and even though he was perfectly formed, he only came to life when God blew breath into his nostrils, and then man became a living soul. So today we're going to look at an image that is just that, an image. However, there will shortly come a time when that image will become alive. The who, what, where, and why of a deadly image will be covered in this edition of the Advent message. My name is Brent Winfield, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and this is the Advent message. When God created Adam, he formed the man with every aspect of his being, except life. That lifeless Adam was just the image of the real person. The man only became alive after God breathed into his nostrils. In Revelation 13, 15, we read the following, quote, and he had power to give life under the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed, end quote. In much the same way that the image of Adam was formed before life was given to him, in the same way the image of the beast of Revelation 13, 15 has to be formed before life is given to it. The Bible explains in that Revelation 13, 15 scripture that America will give power to the image of the beast. That beast's power, of course, is a Roman Catholic Church. In the same way the Catholic Church persecuted and killed God's people during the Dark Ages, in the same way this image will cause the United States of America to persecute and kill God's people in these end times. The image is formed with no power, but then America eventually gives it power, and it will then become a lie. Now, before going any further, let us identify the, the players. The, Re the Revelation 13 scripture tells us who they are. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a, like a lamb. This, by the way, is the U.S. And he spake as a dragon. This is the U.S. persecuting power. And he, the USA, exercised all the power of the first beast before him. This first beast, by the way, is a Roman Catholic Church that killed between 50 and 100 million Christians during the Dark Ages. And the USA caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, which is the Roman Catholic Church, whose deadly wound was healed. Church and state reunited. In the year 1798, the Pope was stripped of his secular authority, causing church and state to be separated. The only event that would heal that deadly wound would be the reuniting of church and state. So early in our narrative, we see major players, which are the America and the Roman Catholic Church. But now, friend, the question begs to be asked, who is this image to the beast, and when will it be formed? Spirit of Prophecy spells it out for us. Listen to what Sister White says, quote, 
when the leading churches of the United States agree on such points of doctrine as are held by them in common, which is Sunday sacredness and state of the dead, shall influence the state, which is the U.S. government, to enforce their decrees, which is Sunday sacredness, and to sustain their institutions. Then Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy and the infliction of civil penalties upon dissenters or Sabbath keepers will inevitably result. Great Controversy 445. She said the leading church in the United States will influence the U.S. government to enforce their wishes. She then says, when that occurs, Protestant America will have formed an image of the Roman hierarchy. We see then, friend, that the leading churches will influence the government of the United States. This is a classic case of church and state joining together. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution reads thusly, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment or, or religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. In other words, the First Amendment prohibits any restrictions of religious freedom. It's in the U.S. Constitution. So when the government is influenced by the church to set aside the tenets of the American Constitution, oh friend, then Seventh-day Adventists will know that they are in trouble. So we will be in trouble. The Bible tells us that we will be killed. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to get some idea, some idea about this plan to murder us? Here's your answer. In Matthew 24, 9 and 10, we read that we are going to be killed. We read in John 16, 2, who is going to kill us? And we read in Revelation 6, 11, the time period of when we will be killed. And finally, we read in Revelation 13, 15, the actual time that we will be killed. Matthew 24 begins the killing narrative. And then between verse 8 and 9 of that chapter, something terrible happens. Let's read that. In verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Before verse 8, Christ listed all the calamities, such as earthquakes and diseases that will, that will occur. But then he says, these are only the beginning. And then in verse 9, he says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So what am I saying? I'm saying between verse 8 and 9, the National Sunday Law is introduced. The NSL is enforced Sunday worship. When the Sunday Law is passed, that will in effect heal the deadly wound. Church and state will have then be amalgamated. Today, more and more voices are being heard saying that the day of worship should be enforced by the government. Christian, Christian conservative voices are saying that God can bless the United States because not all Americans are worshiping on the day, which they say is the Lord's Day, Sunday. Right now, there are four tremendously large and powerful organizations that promote Sunday as the day of rest. These huge entities comprise Catholic and Protestant churches that together represent billions of Christians worldwide. The following four American organizations make up the vast bulk of Christians in the U.S. They wield incredible power, friend, over their millions of members. Listen, number one, Christian Alliance of America. Two, the National Council of Churches. 
three Christian churches together. And then last, but certainly not least, the Catholic Campaign for America. Now, in order to show you the power inherent in these powerhouse organizations, let's take a look at just one of them. We're going to take a look at the National Council of Churches. It's an ecumenical partnership of 37 Christian religious groups in the United States. These groups include more than 100,000 local congregations and 45 million Christians, including Baptists, Catholic, Episcopalians, Lutherans, Methodists, and many more. When you add the largest and oldest body of Christians worldwide, then you might begin to see what Seventh-day Adventists are up against. The World Council of Churches, you've heard of that. The following is taken from the World Council of Churches website. I quote, the World Council of Churches, or the WCC, is the broadest and most inclusive among the many organized expressions of the modern ecumenical movement. A movement whose goal is what? Christian unity. Think about that. The WCC brings together churches, denominations, and church fellowships in more than 120 countries and territories throughout the world representing over 580 million Christians. Wow! Most of the world's Orthodox churches, scores of Anglican, Baptist, Lutheran, Methodist, and Reformed churches, as well as many united and independent churches." End quote. Saint of God, Satan's direct and unmistakable comments regarding the Sunday law and his plans for us are found in this council of war with his demons against Seventh-day Adventists. God gave Ellen White access to the enemy's war council. Now I want you to listen carefully to this because it's given in plain language what plans the devil has in store for us. The following is taken from Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 473. Paragraph 1, quote, But our principal concern is to silence the sect of Sabbath keepers. We must excite popular indignation against them. We will enlist great men and worldly wise men upon our side and induce those in authority to carry out our purposes. Then the Sabbath which I have set up, shall be enforced by laws, the most severe and exacting. Those who disregard them shall be driven out from the cities and villages and made to suffer hunger and privation. When once we have the power, we will show what we can do with those who will not swerve from their allegiance to God. We led the Romish church to inflict imprisonment, torture, and death upon those who refuse to yield to our decrees. And now that we're bringing the Protestant churches and the world into harmony with this right arm of our strength, which is Sunday, by the way, we will finally have a law to exterminate all who will not submit to our authority. And that shall be made the penalty of violating our Sabbath. Then many who are now ranked with commandment keepers will come over to our side. End quote. O oh, saint of God, we're in troublous times. But however, Christ encourages us with these words. But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen. Despite the image to the beast forming, we must not look to the right nor to the left, but to fix our gaze upward, for there our redemption draws nigh. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your coming is near. We look around us and we can tell that soon and very soon we will see the king. But Satan has a plan for us. And in and of ourselves, we cannot battle him. We need Prince Emmanuel by our side. And help us, O oh Lord, to trust in you wholly and solely for our redemption draws nigh. Thank you for being with us today. Bless us now, please. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, that's all for today, friend. Please always remember, God loves you. Yes, he really, really does love you. Hello, friend. The Advent Message Ministry has been serving the Christian community since 2001. Now, this is a self-supported ministry that has so far served over 1.5 million video views and over 12,000 YouTube subscribers with God's end time message. Now this is a worldwide ministry and I, Brent Winfield, is the sole producer, editor, and presenter. You can well imagine the ministry takes a lot of time and effort to produce. Please make a donation of any amount to the Advent Message Ministry for the furthering of God's cause. The PayPal link is located immediately below this video. Thank you. Help others to come to realization of God's love and mercy. God bless you.